Last week was an epic week as we finally heard the gentle heartbeat of Mariah's 500 kilogram power plant. That is freaking amazing! And that name is gonna be Resin Man. Resin Man Andre got busy with creating space for our air vents. This week, Resin Man Andre continues his work on the design of Mariah's nose. Pit climbs into the turbo issue, Smoke and John gets a fan club, and he keeps on shining. All this and so much more in episode 74 of A Dream Called Mariah. The winds of change are blowing through East Coast scratch and dent. It is a new week, it is a new day, and yep, challenges are going to be marching through the door and we're going to try and march them right out again as we knock them off one by one. Behind me, Andre and one of the guys are just busy working on Mariah's nose, and uh, yeah, hopefully we're going to get a lot of movement in that department, and uh, let's not waste any time and get right down to it. Appy Marco is busy with the nice job of cleaning all the old snot out of Mariah's nasal cavities in her nose area. In fact, the whole of Mariah's interior is looking spotlessly clean. If I look around, the winds of change have blown really hard inside this place. Ram tells me he looked at my footage and what he saw freaked him out because he saw how untidy the workshop was. So I've just walked into East Coast Scratch and Dent and this place is tidy, bro. All the stuff, there used to be stuff everywhere, it's gone. And it's all very, very neat and tidy. It is quite disturbing seeing everything like this. Where is the chaos that I've become so used to? I mean, look here. These shelves are full of all the electronic bits and pieces that will be installed in Mirai over the next weeks. Here we have my ceiling material, bed slats, and here's our bed in a box. The trunking for our electronics and our flushing Tetford Lou. All of this will one day disappear and re-emerge on the inside of Mirai. And let's not forget our engine. Just look at this baby. It was nice to walk into East Coast Scratch and Dent and see our engine looking very pretty. She's uh, been given a coat of uh, heat resistant grey paint. And then what Pete's busy doing now is trying to position the, uh, uh, the, the turbo so he can work out how to make the bracket to secure it to the engine. But I'm very happy with what I'm seeing here. This is really, this is good. It's like a, I'm chuffed, hey? I'm very chuffed. Pete, our engine guru, has started to add all the essential bits and pieces that will eventually make up our massive power plant. Pete's busy installing the new alternator. The old one was about 110 amps, and I think this one we've gone up to 240 amps, amps, watts, I'm not sure, but this is a big mama, uh, because with all the extra stuff we're putting in, we need a hell of a lot more power to, to drive all of that. So that's what we're busy with now, and I got that alternator, ooh, a long time ago from our mates at Sparex in Durban. And uh, so yeah, it's a beast. Mariah's new combo of turbo and alternator are going to make her into a beast as well. The turbo positioning is our challenge of the week. First, Pete sticks these lacquer blue pipes onto the engine. Then he places the turbo roughly where it should be. He gets one of the guys to help him. That guy has some work to do, so resin man Andre steps up to the plate. Things are still not falling into place, so boss man Brahm is called into the fray. I am proud to say that the suggestion that was finally accepted came from yours truly, moi. The plan is to construct a U-shaped channel made from 6 to 8 mm steel to connect the turbo to the manifold. My incredible technical drawing skills help the guys share my amazing vision. The steel was ordered, paid for, and delivered in record time. Pitt and Brahm then climbed in and started to manufacture the link. First up, a template was made. Once the shape was correct, then it was time for the hard labor. There's some serious steel bending going on over here and uh, the guys have already started working on 
making that, that link up uh, for the turbo to attach it to the manifold. The steel is heated and bent to the shape of the template. The guys keep checking to see that the link pieces are the correct size. I am clueless as to how strong these sort of things need to be, so I keep on asking Pete if my brilliant idea will be strong enough and will the steel be strong enough. Pete assures me that it will be. Few more hours of that really hard labor and our turbo hookup is starting to take shape nicely. Our little turbo bracket is almost complete. There's just a small little gap that needs to be filled, but it's really, really looking good. Pete has done an amazing job here. So I think Pete is no longer Pete. I think Pete is now engine Pete. Back at Marai, resin man Andre has been hard at work. He is using his invisible superpower right now. The only way I sense his presence is because he left these freshly cut brackets lying around. You can see now what they were for and Andre has made these boxes uh, which are part of the whole air vent system and they're very neat, very tidy. Uh, both of the vents all opened and uh, yeah, no, the front is looking good. There are also going to be some serious modifications to our front doors. That dotted line on the passenger door is the line that this door is going to be cut off at. And, uh, so we're going to have quite a short, compact little door for our access. I think it's going to look very lucky. I checked in with Andre to see when I could next get footage of him working on our side panels. I just popped into East Coast Scratch and Dent to see how our resin man is getting on with all his work. And as you can see, he's hard at work here. The oak is invisible because that's his superpower. But he's there and here he's working hard. Eh? He's working at making all those panels, getting it ready, making it like a... Yeah, those incredible superpowers. So yeah, he's, he's hard at work, eh? hard at work. Then Resin Man's power wore off. And poof, he was there in the flesh. Along with our auto electrician, Sweet Damien. This time it was to position the blower that will be used to demist our windscreen as well as blow cool air from the outside into the driver's area. And you're going to do your outlets, Andre, and it's going to work from the side in here. This one will go to the rear. Someone who is very visible but also has superpowers that are yet to be fully exploited is Smokin' John. One cannot fault this man's dedication to his craft. He has admitted to me that he prefers working with steel over wood. During one of my sleepless nights, I realized we needed to attend to a critical part of our power system, like yesterday. I've been getting a little bit concerned about uh, the fact that we haven't even started to run any wiring or anything for the stuff from the inverter through the whole 12 volt system inside. So this morning I arranged to meet with Donald, the Oak is busy doing that. And I ended up getting a little bit tense because well, first of all, when you just start talking electronese to me, I haven't a freaking clue what you're saying and speak English to me. I do not understand electronese. You speak English and I know what you're talking about. And then a few little other things that just really irritated me. But I think it's also at that stage of the build. I'm at that stage of the build where a lot of things are starting to irritate me and it's normally because of the money is going. Anyway, so what's happening now is we needed to get these cooling fans put in here for this system. Uh, so Brahm and John have been working on this and they've cut holes to put the fans on the inside of the box and Smoke and John is busy and he's just installed the very quiet fans uh, that will suck the air in to keep the whole system cool. I need those fans to blow on me so I can keep cool. I also keep missing Donald, our other electrician guy. But apparently he was here and he wanted to start drilling some holes to run cables. A new development on the uh, 12 volt electrical power front is, is that we are starting to build channels along the floor to run cabling. Um, Donald wanted to drill holes in the roof and Brahm said forget it bro. And I agree with Brahm, no holes in that roof. Uh, it just makes for leaks. No sooner had I finished chatting when the lights flickered and the rain came down. It came down in buckets. Just had a flurry of activity. Uh, good summer thunderstorm hit. So the guys had to suddenly haul all the vehicles that were working on outside inside. And it was just a few minutes ago I was talking about we don't want to drill holes in Marai's roof. That's because of rain like this. 
It is bucketing down there. Bucketing down. The sudden downpour does little to wash away the fear I still nurture for my friends in Ukraine. It is hard to believe that only one month ago all was calm in Eastern Europe. That's it for this week and a good mixed bag. Those of you who are sick of looking at my ugly mug, you'll be pleased to know you'll only have to look at it again in two weeks time because that's when we will broadcast again because I'm going away to the Drakensberg to celebrate my 60th birthday next week. Uh, but I'm not quite finished chatting just yet. There's something I have to get off my chest and that is as a South African right now, I am so embarrassed and I'm embarrassed because of our government's disgusting cowardly stance regarding Russia's attack on Ukraine. I cannot believe it. It's going to impact all of us. There will be consequences for you and consequences for me because of the support for Russia. I've got friends in Ukraine. I don't even know if they're alive or dead. Not all South Africans are like that, my Ukrainian friends. Please believe me. There are millions of us who support you. Millions of us. It's okay, my rant is over. I've got to go now. We will see you in two weeks time. Yeah, and really keep safe. Remember to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. You will find us under A Dream Called Mirai. Until next time, keep your dreams alive.